Super Tuesday came and went, and the Republican presidential race carried on today with no end in sight. Instead, most of the candidates returned to campaigning across the country. In winning six states, Mitt Romney still failed to deliver a knockout blow last night, but today he insisted it will come. I'm prepared to fight all the way to become the nominee, and uh, I, you know I was pleased with our success last night. On CNBC, the Republican frontrunner insisted he knows the path that will take him to victory. We've got the time and the resources and a plan uh, to get all the delegates, uh, and we think that'll get done before the convention. But uh, uh, one thing I can tell you for sure is there's not going to be a brokered convention where some new person comes in and becomes a nominee. It's going to be one of the four people that are still running. Romney's biggest win Tuesday was his one-point squeaker in Ohio. He also scored victories in Massachusetts, where he was once governor, and in Vermont, Virginia, Idaho, and Alaska. Former Pennsylvania Senator Rick Santorum won three states, Tennessee, Oklahoma, and North Dakota. And former House Speaker Newt Gingrich's one claim was Georgia, the state he represented in Congress. Thank you. Only Texas Congressman Ron Paul didn't win a state. Taking all of that into account, a Romney campaign memo today suggested the results make it increasingly difficult for any of the others to catch him. The Associated Press projected that Romney hauled in at least 216 delegates on Super Tuesday, giving him a total of 419. Santorum picked up 86 delegates, bringing his total to 178. Gingrich added 74 delegates to put him at 107 overall. And Paul got at least 22 delegates under proportional representation systems. His total is now 47. More than 1,100 delegates are needed to claim the nomination. But Romney's lead in the count did little to dissuade his rivals. Santorum campaigned this afternoon in Kansas, which holds its caucuses on Saturday. We had a good night last night, but, but so did Governor Romney. That's why we have to start anew here. We have to do well here in Kansas. No, we have to win here in Kansas and win big. Leaders of a super PAC supporting Santorum, the Red, White and Blue Fund, called for Gingrich to quit the race and give Santorum a clear shot at Romney. But Gingrich made clear he has no intention of doing so, as he campaigned in Alabama, which has its primary next Tuesday. We are staying in this race because I believe that it's going to be impossible for a moderate to win the general election. I believe we tried, you know, we tried it in 1996 and it didn't work. We tried it in 2008 and it didn't work. The Republican field will also hunt for delegates in Mississippi and Hawaii next Tuesday and in Illinois and Louisiana later this month. For more on what we saw on Super Tuesday and the path for the Republican candidates, we turn to Susan Page, Washington Bureau Chief of USA Today, Andrew Kohut, President of the Pew Research Center, and former Kentucky Secretary of State Trey Grayson. He's now Director of Harvard's Institute of Politics. Susan, was it last night supposed to clear everything up? <laughs> well, you know, I think it cleared, I think it did clear some things up. I think it made it, uh, it, it was evidence that it, Mitt Romney is likely to be the Republican nominee, but that it's not done yet, that he's going to have to fight on, that these other candidates are not going anywhere, and that we're going to see this fight continue for a month or two months or three months. I want to walk you all through some of the things we saw last night and, and get your sense about it. And I, one of the things, that I wonder what we were seeing when we saw in a state like Virginia, which we didn't pay a lot of attention to, that Ron Paul, Andy, won 41 percent of the vote. Is that the anybody but Romney vote we've been watching all year long? He's not Romney. I mean, we were dealing with a very small number of people who turned out in Virginia in relative terms. But the big thing there was that there was... There's a reluctance to, to accept Romney on very significant, among very significant segments of the Republican base. How did that play out across the board? Well, what we saw is some very familiar patterns. Uh, Romney's inability to, to get uh, the backing of people who say they're very conservative. He lost by 18 points in Ohio among those people, 20 points in Oklahoma, 21 points in, in, in Tennessee, the states that I, I looked at in some, some detail. We saw class mattering. Uh, 
Romney does really well among the people who earn $100,000 a year or more, really well among the college graduates. But among the people with less education and less money, uh, there's not that much support. He was lucky in, in Ohio. He just lost by a little bit to the uh, less affluent uh, working class uh, voters. But in uh, the south, in the southern places, in, in Tennessee and Oklahoma, he lost by 20 points among this. Class is a factor and religion is a factor. In, Susan, yeah, sorry, well, Susan, I want to talk about the South in particular because in, in, by, in, not winning ten, in, win, in not winning Tennessee last night, he missed his chance to make a stake there. Is there a problem in the South for Mitt Romney? Yes, I think clearly so. And it's a, particularly a problem because the South is the Republicans' regional base. You know, that's really where uh, Republicans have their stronghold. And, and as, Andy, and as, as Andy says, with the voters who tend to predominate in the South, including uh, Christian evangelicals, uh, strong supporters of the Tea Party movement, he continues to, to get only a fraction of those voters, about a third of those voters in many of these states. That was a problem for him last night. It'll be a bigger problem next Tuesday in Alabama and Mississippi, which are even more conservative places than Tennessee. Hey, Grace, let me bring you in this, because alone among us, you've actually run for office and uh, in Kentucky statewide, and actually your state border is Ohio, which gives you the room to talk about what happened in Ohio last night. What did happen for your party last night? Well, I think, you know, in, in Ohio, what you saw was Romney performing very well in the urban areas, particularly in Cincinnati. Uh, Rob Portman, who's a new U.S. senator, who's probably on a short list for anybody running for president on the Republican side, was a big backer of Mitt Romney. He had a lot of support there in 2008 when he ran last time, and, and those numbers came in late, and that's what made Ohio so, uh, so much of a, you know, came in around midnight when we finally figured out who won. When you watch this from, from a, a blessed distance, do you think to yourself, well, the delegates are going to win it in the end, or does this momentum or this perception of, of slowed momentum trump everything? Well, they, they both matter. I, I agree with what uh, Susan said right off the top, that I, I do think Romney's going to be the nominee. It's going to take several months. And as we've seen in some of the polling data that's come out in the last couple of weeks, this primary has been damaging for Romney and for the Republican Party in a way that the Obama-Clinton primary didn't appear to be as damaging. Uh, that, that's a that's a parallel that's often tossed out. Like, look, it didn't hurt them in 2008, but it's a, it was a very different race. And that, I think that's the fear if you're Mitt Romney and his supporters is that he'll ultimately win this, but he'll emerge weakened. And it's always hard to beat an incumbent president. And, and a weakened uh, a weakened nominee is not going to help make it any easier. And Andy, yet when you look at his uh, chief challenger, Rick Santorum, he, he didn't win people you expect him to win, like Catholics, or even get the margins you expected among Tea Party members. He has not won Catholics anywhere. In fact, we're going to ask it's a, a it's we're, going to, we're going to ask a question on this week's poll, asking people uh, Republicans if they know what religion he is. I have real questions about that because yeah. he hasn't won Catholics anywhere. No. Uh, and in the Tea Party, he did well on Tea Party people in uh, Tennessee and Oklahoma. But it was pretty even. I mean, one of the reasons why Santorum didn't win Ohio is these Tea Party people didn't perform the way Tea Party people have performed for the non-Romney candidates in most other places. Do you don't see, know why. Don't know yeah, why. I, that's unclear why that is. Yeah. It, it, do you see at all a path for someone like Newt Gingrich, who now says, I'm going to go to Mississippi, I'm going to go to Alabama, and I can tough this out one state at a time? Um, do you see a... Pap? Well, Gingrich's uh, opinion of Gingrich is is is, is pretty low uh, nationwide, really? and I, I think there are places where he's going to do well, but he's not going to be he's going not going to be the the consistent challenger. The challenger at this point is is Santorum. It, it'd be really surprising to me if there was another resurrection of of Newt Gingrich. It just doesn't doesn't look possible. And, and let's talk about uh, Ron Paul, even though he got that chunk of of a percentage of the voters in Virginia, he didn't win or even do well in Alaska, the caucus state that's supposed to be the heart of his stay alive strategy. In a place where it's been a couple days, he got huge crowds in Alaska, right. as he did in North Dakota and Idaho. He didn't win any, any of those three caucus states. Uh, a couple weeks ago, he failed to win in the main caucuses. So I think that we're seeing Ron Paul fall back to the same position he played in 2008, which is he has a band of loyal supporters, but they're not big enough to win a primary, and at this point, not even big enough to win a caucus, although he continues to be the second best organized campaign. His campaign organization is second only to Romney's in terms of getting on ballots and, and, and doing the persistent job when these caucuses go to the next round 
and the third round, we'll know that the Ron Paul people will still be there. Frank Grayson, as you look at this, the, the other three candidates, other than Mitt Romney, who, as far as we know, are going nowhere. There have been no noises right. made about or preparation made for dropping out of the race and unifying. Do you worry that that lack of unity, even though it's only March, can hurt the eventual nominee in the long run? It, it, it could. I, I worry, as I said earlier, about this damaging process. But my, my hunch all along has been that when you get to the Republican convention and, and Mitt Romney gets the nomination and he stands up and says, my name is Mitt Romney, I'm the Republican nominee, my opponent's Barack Obama, that that, that is a unifying uh, statement, that's a unifying act. And, and similarly to 2008, where John McCain won but didn't exactly unify the party so much, in that primary, and, and he actually got ahead in the polls up until the financial meltdown in 2008. So I, I think a lot of the party base will be there. The question is going to be the excitement level, and then can he? It was he so damaged in trying to win the primary that he has trouble getting those independent swing voters to to come back to the Republican fold. Andy, let me ask you about the three E's: enthusiasm, electability, and excitement. Is it three things that Fred Grayson just mentioned? Any sense of that last night? Well. Uh, I saw a really interesting thing in the uh, US, uh, in Wall Street Journal poll, and that is the enthusiasm gap that the Republicans have been holding over the Democrats has disappeared. And uh, only 45 percent of the people in Ohio said that they voted with strongly in, on behalf of their candidate. Most said they voted re with reservations. Now there was a little more enthusiasm in, in uh, Tennessee and Oklahoma. But this is, a, this is a field that barely a majority of Republicans say they have a favorable view of. It's very low. And it's quite unlike the struggle that the Democrats went through in the tough uh, Obama-Mrs. Clinton race, where it was, t it was tough and competitive. But people were exhilarated. The Republicans are not exhilarated. They're, many of them are, are wary or are, are not enthused by their choices. And they're not, they weren't calling each other liars and cheats and fakes in, in, in the Democratic race four years ago, as the Republicans seem to be this time. I guess bottom line is, does the trajectory change, or does it just become a slog from here on in, Susan? I think it's going to be a slog for some time, especially because the calendar is not friendly to Mitt Romney. In March, he really has to get to April before he'll get to friendlier states where he can have big celebratory victory nights. Um, but, you know, I'd note that while the, Democrat, the Republicans are having their problems, no question about it, it's not as though Barack Obama is in such a commanding position. The, his average approval rating in February in the Gallup poll was 45 percent. That is not a winning job approval rating for incumbent presidents in the, in the, in the past, even though he had a, a pretty good month, and it was a month where Republicans we're beating each other up. Okay. Well, we'll be watching the way it all continues to unfold. As always, Susan Page, Andy Kohut, Trey Grayson, thank you all very much. Thank you.